following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hitting, yet completely trivial football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Oh, well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the NFL playoffs. We have made it, the promised land. Well, not quite the promised land, but the first games toward said promised land. Here in week one, a first time extravaganza for all of those involved, as we now, for the first time ever, have. Three games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, all nationally televised, no doubleheaders, no nothing. You just get a full Saturday and Sunday slate of NFL football. Chris, how is it down in Florida with the sun and the fun? Are you ready for said 12 hours of football or whatever it ends up being at this point? Yeah, for sure. I wish we had a sports book down here, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped and ready. Yeah, well, Florida just hates revenue, so they're going to not fight the Seminoles and just allow the Indian tribes to basically bogart the sports joint, if you will, and yeah. oh, take for all, sure. of, uh, all the gambling money. Well, they don't allow sports gambling, so it, it's not a sports joint. It's just a gambling joint. They're just... Uh, the... The tribes have invested a lot of money into not allowing the uh, powers that be create that law, which allows sports gambling in Florida. So, uh, you know, the, the, the more they do that, the the harder this is going to be. Well, well Disney, Disney's doing it, too. You know, Disney put up a bunch of money, too, to fight this. So, well. Unfortunate for you, but uh, fortunately for some of us, especially those in New Jersey, Vegas, amongst others, I forget where they're all. I mean, it's basically been approved in uh, a ton of places at this point. I don't have the list in front of me. Go on the Internet and Google it. But for a lot of it, uh, a lot of us, we are very excited for this extravaganza. And you'll just have to play along in spirit or obviously funnel your money to another state or somebody else or your local bookie. Uh So uh, however it might be, there is a lot of gambling to be taken this week. Now, we had one week last week where it was really kind of shoddy, and I don't really even know if it's worthwhile uh, going through everything, but I think you were, I don't know, three and something. I was three and something, or maybe we got a fourth win. I didn't have, um, I the way I chalked it up on my sheet with the Washington-Philly game, I didn't know if you took Philly or Washington, and I didn't want to listen back to the podcast. Who did you end up taking? Philly plus the uh, six and a half. Yeah, so that was Philly for me too. So we had a terrible week, but obviously we stated going into it that it was a pretty rough week to do any kind of gambling because, I mean, (sighs) basically week 17 is garbaggio, especially last week. It really was terrible, terrible week of football. I mean, nothing really worthwhile talking about. Um, I don't know if you will. I mean, you know, with the games barreling down an, an hour before us, there's nothing really to revisit. But um, obviously people love talking about the, the Philly benching of their quarterback in the game that we just talked about. You took Philly, as did I. Uh, Wait, you said we only had four wins? That's not true. Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I went undefeated. Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. I wrote no. all of those wrong. I wrote no. all, I wrote no, all of those no. wrong. I'm kidding. I didn't go undefeated. Nobody goes undefeated in week 17 of the playoff of oh the, the regular season. I fully understood that. All right, the podcast has come crashing to a halt. As sarcasm is not uh, understood on anyone's point. And yes, no, I know that you didn't pick them all. Uh, we were we were both pretty terrible. But um, so let's screw going back over the – maybe ultimately we'll do a, a recap on how we did for the season. But um, as it was before last week, and last week didn't have any kind of implications, 
on the end result. You were victorious for the year in our contest. You were above 500. I ended up being below 500. Although, if we were to factor in last week's debacle, it might have put you under 500 as well because you were teetering um, on staying above. But uh, in the race of the two brothers, uh, I fell, which I believe is for the second year in a row because I think you were also... Second year in a row. Yeah, you were also victorious last year. And as we continue to do our gambling, I had a awful regular season, uh, which all started uh, probably around week eight or so, or maybe later than that, when I took one week and I was basically above above my initial deposit all year, and then I swung for the fences one year, one week, and bet four or five hundred, lost that, chopped my my bank account in half, and I chased my tail ever since. You ended up. Uh, I don't know. Probably a couple hundred under your initial deposit. We played with a thousand, and then we played out the year. And where did you leave? Because last week you lost your parlays and your teasers, but you won on your Ravens bet. Yeah, I won last week. I won the Ravens hundred dollars straight up, but I lost the seventy-five. So. I was plus 25 for the week, which put me at 925, 75 under. Yeah, the so initial. You, you were about break even. So um, your break even, I repopped, and then in my second deposit, I, I literally hit nothing. I, I don't know if I hit anything in the entire second half of the year. Um, I had a lot of two for threes, but uh, you were victorious on the year with your picks and with your pocketbook. And I am left licking my wounds. Uh, otherwise, you know, around, I, I mean, it was pretty much even Steven across the board. Dogs had a slight favorite um, over the uh, the dogs over the favorites. Um, the unders were slightly ahead of the overs. And the teasers ended up about 70% for the year, no matter how you chalked it up. And then for the other three people that we follow, the money, the sharps, and the tickets, all via the sports uh, app called Action Network. They also have a couple of good podcasts you can follow. The money was victorious for the year. The general public and the tickets came in after them. And the sharps, who were terrible in the beginning of the year, came back and were about 500. So, And those stats are always based, the way we do it is I just give the numbers based on the action app at the time that we're actually betting. That way it makes sense. So if you do it at kickoff, uh, it probably won't relate to what we talk about because I obviously take that snapshot in time as when we're doing it. So, um, And we'll continue that format here throughout the postseason. So I figured we've got uh, four downs. The final down will be our gambling. The first down will be the two best games of the weekend. And then we'll do Saturday, Sunday. So do uh, you want to kick this off here? Because, I mean, I know I got two games that I want to look at. And I'm sure they're the same games that you want to look at. So why don't we kick it off and we'll do our first down here. First down. First down. <laughs> And I will let you, sir, choose the first game to talk about. And if you don't pick one of these two games, then there's something wrong with you. Bills, Colts. Bills, Colts. We go. So, uh, we will go to Bills Field here. This will be the first game on the docket for Saturday. And it is currently the Bills with a a 6.5-point favorite. The over-under is 51.5. The... Bills currently have 60% of the tickets and 81% of the money. So big money coming in on the Bills here. The Sharps, obviously, as the Sharps like to do, have then sided on the side of the Colts. Bills, DVOA, offense is 5, defense is 12. The Colts, offense is 12, defense is 7. So all that said, what are you looking at here in regards to the first game this Saturday, which is going to be in just about an hour? Uh, I don't, you know, I, I really like the Bills. I love the Bills. Co- coming off of like a, you know, they're coming off of, if it wasn't for, they, like they were just talking about on the TV, if it wasn't for that Hail Mary, Hail Murray, whatever you want to call it, they, they would have won 10 in a row, four consecutive double-digit victories, their defense is playing better. 
Well, the question becomes I, the six and a half because I, I, I really don't think that the Colts have a chance of winning here at all. For one, inside team, outside, road game, it's going to be cold. I mean, are, are we both in agreement that the Bills are going to win the game? I just, I, like everybody in there, what, what are the numbers on this? What, 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 what are the guys, what are, what are, what are, what are the, uh, who's playing what? Did you have, you have the money? Yeah, I, oh, I, I said those already. The money was 81 per, I, 81% of the money is on the Bills, 60% of the tickets. Right, 81% of the Bills. Yeah, 81% of the Bills. It's just like we get to the playoffs, and I feel like every year I'm like, Bills, obviously. You know, Seahawks, obviously. Bucks, obviously. And then we start to watch the games, and you're like, wait. Man, I forgot Jonathan Taylor's really good, and I forgot the Colts' offense is actually putting it together and that their defense is still as solid as it was seven weeks ago. So playing devil's advocate, like, okay, the Bills have been playing very good, but the Colts' defense has been pretty good. And Phillip Rivers hasn't been playing like a schmuck recently. No, well, and jo- not like a schmuck, no. <laughs> you have to John- play like a schmuck and, and be in the NFL. But, yes, I understand. Stop! Philip Rivers is awful. No, I agree. I agree. I'm just saying schmuck is is a pretty pretty harsh term to use for an NFL. How many but. times? How many times last year? He's lucky to have another job after last year. How many times last year for the Chargers was he like, oh, I think my guy's open. I'm just going to throw the ball that way. Well, look, if you take the two years last year in uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, and then this year. In Indianapolis, I, I mean, Rivers' days are very well far behind him by a good distance. And so right now, his op, his mission is to just play not shitty, if you will. So, I mean, you would say competent, but maybe, it's, maybe he can't even do it competent. Maybe his goal is just to not be horrendous. Uh, yeah. Or, like you say, as a schmuck. So, schmuck. I, you know, Jonathan Taylor obviously is on an uptick here. And the rush offense has has shown itself in the past couple of weeks. Um, and currently, I, I think their rush offense is actually better than their pass offense. And if I look it up, uh, I am correct there. So the DVOA on the rush side is 12. Pass side is 16. Again, their total DVOA offense is 12. So, you know, is that ability to run the ball with a little bit of success maybe combined with some kind of offensive prowess from a veteran quarterback be enough to get past the Bills here in Buffalo? Probably not. I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I just, it's tough for me. How would they do it, though? Running the ball. You think? Control, I, controlling the clock. I almost think that they need Buffalo to tank. Like, they need a Josh Allen terrible game in order to pull off a W here. I didn't even know Diggs was hurt until like 20 minutes ago, and they're like, Diggs is going to play. Well, that's that lingering injury, right? So that that was the injury both, I, I think him and Beasley suffered it uh, in that same game, right? So, a weak injury, though. That wasn't the injury he had. He had a, a, a foot injury. They took him out of for a foot thing. And the, the, the foot isn't the one that they, they're listing him on the injury no, report with today? Oh, please. Says, uh, uh, jo- uh, Stefan Diggs expected to play today. Uh, oblique. I was like, oblique. When did he get in? When did he pick up an oblique injury? Well, I, I had seen the injury designation throughout the week. I had just assumed it was still the foot injury, which wasn't 100% going into last <laughs> week. Right. So, uh, and Beasley, that's the knee injury he suffered in New England when they left him in there in garbage time. So, I mean, two. That's what we get. That's two big injuries right there. However, you have DeForest Buckner also injured on the Colts side. Although, I guess that's the same injury he had last week and he was able to play through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm rooting for the... Uh, I'm rooting for the Colts. Like, from a, a, just a fan perspective. I just... I, I mean, I like the Bills. I just don't like them that much. Um, but from a gambling perspective, it's very tough to bet against Buffalo. I mean, they're they're tearing it up right now. People are picking them to win the the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know. Well, they're they're trending pretty hot because they've played very well down the stretch. 
I still have questions uh, about Josh Allen. Is and when you factor in that it's one of his first times in the playoff. Obviously, last last year was his first time. This is the second year, but I'm saying, you know, he doesn't have a ton of playoff experience, and here he is going into the playoffs. You know, we'll see how it goes. I Didn't that's my he question. Collapse. Mark. Didn't he collapse last year? I, I I'll be honest. I can't remember the first like four games of this year, much less the H- playoffs Houston. last year. Houston, Houston versus Buffalo last year. What? Well, right. So Tennessee, to, Tennessee beat. They went to overtime. Tennessee beat the Ravens. I'm trying to think of the games, right? Because I think this this week is the week that Tennessee beat Baltimore last last year, right? The first week of the season, or first week of the. Uh, First week of the postseason? No. Baltimore was the number one seed last year. Oh, so they were on a bye. So then it was the second week. Okay, so the second week is when Tennessee. So who Tennessee beat week one then? Uh, Tennessee beat... I can't remember for the life of me. I know New England was in there. Did New England lose to Tennessee? And that was Brady's yes. last game, right? Yes. Yeah. And so the other game that was played that day was the Buffalo Houston game, and you're correct in that because uh, didn't Houston then the following week go into Kansas City, open up that big league, and then get trounced? Yeah, right. Isn't that yeah. how that played out? Yeah, yeah. So you're right in that regard. So they lost the first game to Houston. So zero and one for Josh Allen going into his second playoff game ever. Yeah. Uh-huh. He was. They opened up a, a sixteen nothing lead, and they they collapsed. But, but Allen collapsed. I don't. I don't remember the context of the game. I'd have to watch it again. I'm looking at it now. They 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 went up sixteen nothing going into the in the third quarter, and then Deshaun Watson just. Josh Allen was not good. I mean, yeah. He just was not good. I, I I have a little hesitation taking the Bills, but I. Took them. It sounds to me as though you're taking them also with the six and a half. Yeah, yeah, I'll be taking them for I, sure. I, I, I like it as a tease, but I wouldn't be shocked if the game is a little bit closer. But I just have trouble getting behind the Colts offense on the road here in Buffalo outdoors. Um, I don't know. Maybe they can turn it up on on the ground game and control the clock a little bit and dictate how the game plays out, but I just see the Bills really being able to do uh, anything they want here and the Colts struggling in this situation. So I'll, I'll take the six and a half, even though it's pretty heavy for a playoff game. Although there's there's kind of a lot of those. And this game opened up at seven, so it really hasn't moved all that much. Over under 51 and a half, does it strike your fancy in any way, shape, or form? I, I guess if if the Colts are going to win, it'll go over. If the Bills win, it could very easily go under. Right. I think I'm leaning toward the under in that one. I think that's one of the under games that I'll pick later on. So we're both here on the Bills with the six and a half. That leaves one of the other big games. I'm going to pick this one. Um, I am going to obviously go now to Nissan Stadium where the Titans will be hosting the Ravens. This game, to me, I think is the best game of the weekend. The Ravens right now, road favorites by three. The over-under is 54-and-a-half. A A lot of points there on the over-under for a Ravens defense that played very well down the stretch. Although their offense also played well, and the Titans have been offense for their team basically all year. So right now, with the Ravens favored by three, the money is on the Ravens at 77%. The tickets are a lot tighter at 54%. And then the Sharps obviously leaned toward the Titans. The Ravens' DVOA offense is 11. Their defense is 9. The Titans are actually DVOA offense 4. And their defense 29. So you see a huge discrepancy with the Titans' defense and the Ravens' defense. And, you know, the offenses are... are kind of equal. I mean, the Ravens struggled all year long and really turned it up toward the end. So, do the Titans here win as a home dog? I mean, home dogs have not really played out toward anything all year long. My gut reaction is the Ravens, but I'm not sure if I'm not giving the Titans enough credit here. Why would you give them credit? What what, what have they done that's... Uh, who have they? Who have they beat that you were like? You know what? They actually have a lot of potential. 
Uh, I, I don't know if there's any big wins on their schedule from the past year. However, I will say that, you know, th- their offense has played well. I You know, Henry had 2,000 yards rushing, and I know they they kind of fed him there toward the end of the season to make sure that he got that. However, you know, in a given game, if you want to run a strategy where you're going to do ball control, it's not like they can do ball control and ball control only. I mean, they can really hammer you with Henry, and then they've been able to stretch the field quite a bit, although, obviously, injuries could come into effect here because A.J. Brown, while he is going to play, is has been banged up forever. And this is not the time, uh, you know, that you want to see your number one receiver injured. They have other players, I guess, Corey Davis, you know. But, I mean, A.J. Brown and Henry were their big one-two. So, I mean, that that's the that's how I, I wonder if I'm not giving them enough credit. Dude, A.J. Brown's been hurt all year. Yeah, but... All a, year. I agree, but but a lot in the past couple of... Uh, a lot in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, that, that one ankle. I mean, every game... I, now, he might be hamping, amping it up a little bit um, and acting however. He goes down, and sometimes he has trouble even getting up off the turf. I know. I know, and he's... You think every time he like tore his Achilles, you're like, "Oh man, that was a bad one." I know he does seem to get up and then just play. And then you're like, "Wait, what the hell? You do? You were just, you just called for the stretcher, and now you're you're <laughs> you're playing." I know he 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 goes down, and it's like, ah! <laughs> it's he, he's dying on the field, yeah. and then all all of a sudden he just gets up, and you're like, "Whoa, okay, all right, sure enough." But if you want to look at their past, let's let's knock off week seventeen. Uh, the Titans passed uh, five. They lost to Green Bay. They beat the Lions. They beat the Jaguars. They lost to the Browns, and they beat the Colts. So, and that Colts was they beat the Colts, but then they lost to the Colts two weeks prior. To that in between was a, a was a Ravens win. So I mean, I'm just I'm so tired all week long. I'm hearing, remember when the Titans beat the Ravens last year? And it's like I do, but that was twelve months ago. Like that—that's great. Like you know, does that mean they automatically are going to beat them this year? No, I, I mean, look, as it applies to this game, I don't know if the the Titans' offense um, is really going to be, you know, the biggest factor. I, I like I I think the Titans' offense will do a little bit of something. I don't know if they're going to have their best primo game of the season because the Ravens defense is pretty solid. Um, I I guess the question for me is the Ravens offense versus the Titans defense, because if the Ravens offense is operating as well as it had in the past couple of weeks with the way that they're running the ball and then mixing in, you know, successful an, a successful offensive pass game, the Titans' defense, I don't know if it's good enough to stop them. And then if it becomes a point-scoring contest, I you know, I, I tend to favor the Ravens. I, I'm going to be <laughs> open and honest about this whole game. I have zero interest in the Titans. Like, I don't even care how the game script goes. I've told you for weeks I've been all about the Ravens, and, and they're a scary team. Um... I mean, they laid 13 points last week, and if I had $1,000 to my name, I probably would have bet it directly on the Ravens last week when they crushed the Bengals. Like, I I just think they're going to be tough to beat. The Ravens are very good. Very good. Have you you watched their games on Rewind? I haven't watched the games in Rewind because the past couple of games that they played have just been kind of Garbaggio games. I, I mean, who the hell have they played? Um, let's go through here. I, I, I haven't rewatched. I watched the one. Uh, hold on. I, they did. Didn't they play the? Uh, they play the Giants. No, a, at one point, which was, and the, and they throttled two we- them. Two weeks ago, right? Yeah. So I watched that game, obviously. Uh, but their other and games, they, I, I haven't rewatched because. I but mean, dude, they thro- they throttled a decent defense. Like the Giants' defense was not bad. Uh, again, as a Giant fan, I, my opinion on their defense is they have a great front line and everything else is pretty suspect minus Bradbury. So, you know, throttling the Giants defense isn't difficult per se. Um, where the heck are the Ravens here? Uh, here they are. 
Uh, and that's actually uh, the old man on the uh, phone calling. Yeah, he's us. been calling me too. I'm sure. So our our, our father is a uh, huge gambler, and so he's getting really amped up for his slate right. of games this weekend. Who, who so do you we, like? Tell me who. Yeah, Tell yeah, me who yeah, you like. So the Ravens here, uh, they played the Bengals, the Giants, the Jaguars, the Browns, the uh, Cowboys, and then Week 12 you get the the. Steelers and before that the Titans, but really since week thirteen they played nothing. So yes, they played well. It's ju- it's also kind of a lack of an opponent. You want to throw the Giants defense in there? Maybe. Well, they had they had the Steelers beat. They they had the Steelers beat by by eighteen points in that game, and they blew that lead. They had the Titans beat by sixteen points, and they blew that lead. So it's not like they're a bad team. They're very very good. They had a couple bad losses. They could have very easily been another win, and they would have been like the three seed. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that they're in the playoffs because they were the wild card team that deserved to be there. Um, I, I, in regards to this game, I kind of am having any, I'm having trouble thinking of any situation in which the Titans can win. Sons, Lamar just stinking up the joint again, which is kind of yep. what happened last year. That's exactly, that's exactly the problem. Well, their passing offense sucks anyway, but they hit, they run the ball so well they don't even care. It's just run versus run. This game could be done in two hours, hour and a half. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think. I don't think the Titans really. I hate to say it. I, I don't even think they have a shot here. You know, and you're given. And it's only three points, so the Ravens only have to win by three. Now, I'm not the person to listen to. I've had a terrible year, and I was under 500 total. However, um, I'm going Ravens here. How about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ravens are a big part of my wagers this weekend. All right, so those are the the two uh, top games that we'll pick, one for each day there. you got the Bills-Colts first game there, uh, Ravens-Titans in, on Sunday, also the first game on the Sunday docket. So let's go through the rest of the schedule, and we'll start with the two other Saturday games. Second down. Second down. All right, so the first game will be at Lumen Field in Seattle. Lumen Field? What the hell is Lumen Field? Well, it used to be CenturyLink Field, and then the company changed, and that happened actually in November. Although I can almost guarantee I've heard multiple uh, people refer to it as uh, whatever, CenturyLink Field still. But Lumen Field in Seattle. The Seahawks will be hosting the Rams. Seahawks currently only a three-point favorite at home. 58% of the tickets are on the Seahawks, 51% of the money. So it's almost a coin flip in terms of the cash coming in. But the tickets are definitely siding toward the Seahawks. The over-under is 42 points. Um, and the DVOA is Seahawks are 6 on offense, 16 on defense. Rams are 10 on offense, 4 on defense. So the Rams' defense, obviously... Uh, not talked about all that much outside of Aaron Donald, but the team as a unit has performed pretty well. Seahawks defense has struggled all year. So now you have a an offense that on the Rams side that isn't that great, and it really depends on the quarterback. And then for the Seahawks, you have an offense that was great but isn't so much right now against a defense that has had moments where they really have shined. So what do you see here in Seattle where the Rams, we just don't know what quarterback is actually going to play. And I want to say, I, I think they're probably better without Goff. It's, no, Goff is going to play. I, I, you would think so, right? You're not going to say it could be either guy, you know, this long. Although, you know, a thumb injury is a thumb injury. Now, he has been throwing this week. So, if he's throwing, then, you know, it, it definitely nods toward the... N- I don't know, the, are they, Wake, the Wake Forest quarterback, you know, grabbed off of the scrap heap. Yeah, who didn't look? Who didn't look that bad? He threw for a bunch of yards. I, look, um, Wolford played great in the situation that was given to him. I just think that in the playoffs, you can't not go with Goff so long as Goff can take the field and throw the ball ten yards. Isn't Wolford another college like next to Wake Forest? Isn't it Wolford? I don't, I forget, but it could yeah. be. 
Yeah. That's a little Google, Google check. Wofford University. Growing up, growing up <laughs> with the last name Wofford, and you wind up going to Wake Forest instead of Wofford. Wofford, uh, Univ- Wofford College, which is found in... I thought it was, I thought it was down the street from... It, uh, it is uh, Spartansburg, South Carolina. So um, oh, South Carolina. Yeah, it's a Carolina away. Not not close. I'm, I'm sure they played. You know, I, I'm sure they got into some kind of NCAA tournament, which is why you're remembering Wolford. But oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there was. I think it was the the basketball tournament. For and they they wind up winning one random game. Right. Uh, well, the only Wolford we're thinking about is the quarterback, and it doesn't seem like. He's going to play, but he's there if he needs to be. I don't know. I, I Are there fans? There's no fans, right? I think the only fans that are going to be taking place this weekend uh, will be taking place. Bills. Will be will be in the house this weekend are the Bills and the, and the Saints. Wait, the Saints got that passed? I thought they did. I could <laughs> be wrong. But, you know, in this game, I... Do, there will be nobody in Seattle. I know that for a fact. Yeah, that sucks because that makes that so much harder to to play. But people people are betting on the Rams, man. That brought it from a four and a half to a three. Uh, if it goes to two and a half, oh, I would love it. Well, this would opened up the, at four and a half, and people have been dumping on the Rams. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. If it gets to two and a half, I, tell me you don't like the Hawks even more. I like the Hawks regardless. I, I'll be honest. I, I, I can't get behind the Rams without knowing I'm going to get A, Goff, and B, good Goff. I know their defense is good. I, and I love Aaron Donald. And, you know, it's been a unit that has performed better as the season has gone on. So they're trending going into the playoffs, which is awesome. However, in this situation, I, the, the Goff question prevent, prevents me from ever taking the Rams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go Hawks for sure. I'm with you. Yeah, I I can't. And the over-under here is 42. That's really low. Uh, this These teams do not perform well against each other. They just, it's, it is just ugly, ugly football. Yeah, I'm, I'm just staying away from that altogether. I mean, so far, the two games we previously talked about had, had over-unders in the 50s, and then all of a sudden you drop off here in the in the 4 o'clock Saturday game, and you got a 42. So this could be a slop fest if you're looking at the over-under. Um, so we're both going to go with the Seahawks there. And so then that leaves the night game for Saturday, which will be the Bucks versus the used to be Redskins, currently Washington football team. This game going to be played in Washington at FedEx Field. The Bucks heavy favorite at eight points, a full eight. The over-under is 44 and a half. So the tickets are right now 59% for the Bucks. The money is 58% for the Bucks, And the Sharps have leaned on the Redskins here. So, 44 I don't know and a half. What happened. I don't know what happened in the past... 30 minutes of this podcast, but that jumped on every site. I'm looking on Action Network. It jumped a full point in 30 minutes. So something happened where what, either... 8 to 9? Yeah. Uh, I would imagine because there's question marks about Alex Smith's ankle, and I think people have just waited long enough to see if the spread would have gone up more. It stayed at the 8, and I think just people are dumping. Dumping, like just dumping in the past. I mean, it is noon, so what is that, 9 a.m. on the West Coast? That means maybe the other money from who knows. But that's a lot to go up in 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I love the Bucks here, man. I thought they were. I thought that was one of the easiest picks of the week. I, I just don't – and it's not that Washington defense isn't good. It's that I don't think their offense is good enough to – to make up for what the Bucks are going to do. Well, here's the DVOA breakdowns for both teams. The Bucks' offense is three. Their defense is five. Washington's offense is 32nd, last in the league, and their defense is three. So, you know, this game really f- is all about Washington's offense. And I think they're going to have basically a full slot, right? They're getting everybody back. McLaurin's going to be 
uh, playing. I think Gibson's going to be playing. Uh, the question mark, obviously, is Alex Smith and his ankle. Yeah, I don't know. They were talking about how Alex Smith is, was he 5-1 and one or 6-1 and one as the starter of Washington? Yeah, I mean, look, at some point during the season, Rivera just basically said, look, I'm taking charge of this, and I'm doing this the way that I know it'll work. And they kissed off Dwayne Haskins, sent him to the bench, and just went with Alex Smith. And it really changed the entire season. And then they played defense, and they played manageable offense. That's what it was. And it worked. And it worked. I I mean, it it didn't work all that well. I mean, they still finished under 500, But here they are in the playoffs. So they won the NFC East. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. You... You're not concerned about the eight being too high. Uh, it's very high. I just, but I, that's the thing is that I don't think, even if it's field goals, even if Tampa's just kicking field goals, <laughs> like I just don't see, like Bucks defense is pretty good. They're I mean, not great. They were a lot better to begin in the year, but yeah, I mean, no, they, Devin, no Devin White scares me. He's not playing? I didn't see no. that in the injury report. I know he's not playing. He's on the COVID list. That's the only thing that scares COVID. I guess last week he hasn't passed yet. I don't think so. I I heard on the NFL radio uh, yesterday that he's out. Uh, So he's not going to play against Washington. How come I missed that on the injury report? Uh, Regardless, that's a huge, that's a huge deal. That's that's a huge huge deal. deal. Huge. Because he's probably going to cover, what's a tight end's name? Uh, Thomas. And he would probably cover uh, McKissick coming out of the, the backfield. Oh, so he went He went on, a, on on Friday, right? Oh, I guess he hasn't cleared the 10 days. Uh, that Yeah, there's no way he's going to clear the 10 days. Okay. That's a huge deal. Uh, I'll, I'll okay. So I'm taking Washington anyway because I didn't like the eight points, and I like Brady. I like the Bucks. I kind of love the Bucks and a tease, but the eight to me is just really, it's just really heavy. I don't know. I'm taking I'm taking the Redskins. I think the eight is too much. I I definitely like the Bucks money line. I like the Bucks and a tease. I don't like the Bucks with eight. I'm gonna go Bucks. I, I still think they're gonna. I still think they're gonna play. They have so many weapons. They're just. I, I just. I don't. I don't think Washington has oh, enough defense you, to stop them. You mean the Lashawn McCoy being out doesn't impact your judging of the game? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. He has. has who, he, he's like. That's re- not even an announcement. <laughs> it's like Lashawn McCoy is playing. Oh well. Who reports yeah. that? I don't oh, know. Lashawn McCoy's out. They're they're <laughs> promoting. Uh, What's his name from the practice squad? I was like, oh my god! You got to give Shady credit, though. I mean, he is like five years past being significant, and he's still getting <laughs> playing time here and there and making rosters. I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, he's a good veteran running back to have in the locker room. I think. I guess I, a veteran running back in the locker room. I, I don't know. It, Gettleman tried to pull that garbage with Jonathan Stewart. It was like, come on, buddy. No. Just give us tools we can play with. I don't know. I saw Shady play, I don't know, maybe it was a week or two ago I saw some play, and I'm like, ah, you know, they're Shady. Not bad. But uh, anyway, he's that was a joke, obviously, because nobody cares about the status of LaShawn McCoy. So uh, I'm going to be taking the Washington football team. You're going to be taking the Buccaneers. And that does it for the Saturday docket. So let's take a look at the Sunday team games that we have not spoke about yet. Third down. And the first game will be the Saints-Bears game to be played at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The Saints are currently 10-point favorites versus the Bears. The over-under is 47 points. The Saints right now have 76% of the money and 57% of the tickets. And you can assume the Sharps are going to be going with the Bears when you see movement like that, in which they are. So, this is 10. I don't know if it's moved in the past half an hour. But 10 points here with the Saints. I I mean, is that too much for a Bears team that has ran the ball pretty well and defense is okay? It's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. I'm I'm going with the Bears. I'm going with the underdog. 
Still 10 points here um, as of right now, 12-19. Uh, I mean, you're you're going with the Bears in the 10. Yeah, oh yeah. Trubisky on the road doesn't scare you. I just don't know about the this, this Saints. I don't, like, who's... Is Kamara fully back from COVID? Is Michael Thomas fully recovered from his uh, injury? Is is Jared Cook still breathing? Is is Drew Brees uh, gonna play? Like, is he gonna play like a lot? You know, like I. I well, Kamara, I think, is the biggest question mark because, but I think he he's fine and good to go. He probably could have played last week. It sounds like whatever COVID he had, if he had a case, close contact, whatever it was, it was not anything significant. But dude, he hasn't practiced in full. I know, but he can't practice. That that's the reason why he hasn't. I, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think you can practice with. COVID, which is why everybody know, was wondering about the game because if it went off yet today instead of tomorrow, I don't think right. he could have wouldn't played. have been able to play. Right, right. So it's, I mean, he's not practicing, so that's a big deal. You know, hasn't practiced in a while going into a playoff game. I get that he's good. I get he's a professional athlete. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure about the impact of him not practicing. Uh, I, I think that the Kamara thing will be negligent. But uh, negligible, but I, I, you never know. You really don't know. So the offense with Kamara is DVOA seven. Their defense is two. They were two in the league this year. The Bears' offense is putrid. Obviously, twenty five DVOA. Their defense has always been okay. It was higher earlier in the year. It slid down and finished off at eight. Um, and that defense was basically split. I mean, it was better against the rush when they were four versus the pass when they were 13. So, I don't know. The 10 points to me scares me. And I originally was going to go with the Bears, but I can't get behind Trubisky. I can't do it. I mean, isn't that a lot to ask to to, to think that Mitch is going to go on the road here against a defense that was ranked DVOA second and perform at all? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, he's like, do you remember? <laughs> I always think of your buddy Sal Pernice. Do you remember the video game Slalom? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Slalom. You know, yeah. you remember when like you hit the, you hit the turn and he is like a. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Sal used to do that all the time, right. I know, like that reminds me of Mitch Trubisky because, like, you think he's just going to collapse. Like, I watch him play, and I'm like, "Oh, this is going to be horrible." And he, like, he, like, he, th- 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 and like, he makes a good play, and you're like, "Oh, I forgot." Like, Trubisky has some sort of talent. Like, he's okay, right? Like that. That's that's. I I just I you don't should- know what. I, I got to hit the brakes here. You should check to see if Slalom is on that video game system that I got you I for tried. Christmas. I tried. Oh, it's not there? I tried. I tried. I, it, the, the, the one link was frozen. There was like another link on a difference. Yeah, like it, 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 I couldn't get it going. Oh, I, I, Have you bumped into a lot of things that don't work on that thing or no? Uh, it's not like like some work. But you have to turn the volume off because the volume doesn't match the game. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I got my brother a like an emulator uh, system uh, off of eBay that was the uh, retro pie based system, and so it was kind of a you know a shot in the dark, see how it works and, and whether it's playable or not. And it seems like it's kind of fifty fifty. It's fifty fifty. I just ordered one of the wireless remotes right. uh, from Am- from Amazon, so I'm excited to be able to sit back on the couch and. But like I was, de- I've been destroying some Tecmo Super Bowl, like it, like the classics. The classics are working great. The oh, okay, that right. You it's, know, like you get enough utilization out of it that it's worth it. Oh, for sure. Okay, all right. So anyway, so Mitch Trubisky is the slalom looking to crash and then pulls it all together and makes the play. Yeah. So it allows you, it allows you to side with the Bears here because you just don't think it's going to be a Trubisky tank fest. I don't. No, I don't. Uh, I'm on the opposite side here. I- I'm taking the Saints. I hate taking 10 points. Um, and 
this game, I, I kind of would go the same route I did with Washington and take the dog. But unfortunately, I Trubisky, I just have no faith in them. And I know Montgomery has played well. I know their rushing offense has done good down the stretch, which has helped them out. I, I just don't know. The Saints defense is really pretty solid, and they were second against the rush. And I think that ends up becoming key. Because if the Saints defense is good against the Bears rushing offense, and then that leaves Trubisky to try to do something with his arm, that scares me to no end. So I'm going to go Saints here and the 10 points. And uh, so you're going to go Bears. Over under there was 47. Um, Pretty aggressive 47 for a game that features the second and eighth DVOA defenses, no? I can't figure out why. I I, I don't know either. I, I mean, 27, what, uh, you, you're looking at 27 to 20? You know, you, you're giving the Bears 20 points of offense, and then obviously if you fluctuate any way, shape, or form, it goes over. Maybe they just think the Saints score a lot. I don't know. I'm not yeah, but sure. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be a 27-20. They're saying it's going to be 31-31-18. Right, I'm just coming up with numbers in my own head to justify the 47. I am not taking into account the line at this at this time. Right? right. But yeah, if you were to do that 37 to 10, right? That gives you the 47. Right. So, uh, anyway, I don't know. That, that that looked a little iffy to me. I, I kind of like the under in that one. But I'm going to be on the Saints. You're going to be on the Bears. That leaves one game left, and that is the Steelers-Browns game, which will be the night game on Sunday to be played at Heinz Field. Steelers, six-point favorites. The over-under is 47 points. The Steelers right now are a trifecta bet here with the Sharps on the Steelers, 76% of the money on the Steelers, and 61% of the tickets on the Steelers. The Browns, obviously, getting throttled with COVID right now. They will be without their coach, although I'm sure he will be in communication with them in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Stefanski on the COVID list. Uh, There were other ones, but, I mean, the coach is the biggest. They've been playing in parking lots because they keep shutting down the stadium. I I don't know. Did did the Browns have a shot here? Uh, No. I mean, it went from three and a half to six. It's probably going to wind up being six and a half, seven, seven and a half by the time game time goes off. You know, kudos to the Browns for making it this far. Steelers aren't going to lose at home in the playoffs. This ain't going to happen. Not on a Sunday night. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, can I, I think to me, the biggest scare factor here is having Baker Mayfield go in there uh, in this situation where they haven't really practiced all day. They're kind of making it up. The coach isn't going to be there. And then you have a Steeler team at home who the public and you know the media and people have been kind of shitting on the Steelers here for the past couple of weeks. Uh, and now you got Mayfield going into that buzzsaw. And that's what scares me. And that because th- he's going to be going up against the number one ranked DVOA defense. And granted, the Steelers' offense is 22nd, but, you know, the defense is number one. Brown's offense, by the way, was nine on the year. I mean, I don't know how many. How many of the original starting 11 do the Steelers have? Do you know? You know how many defensive starters they're out for the year? It was I don't have the, I four. don't have the death chart uh, ahead of me, but obviously the people that they lost throughout the year, uh, uh, Devin Bush was the first, then they lost Bud Dupree. Uh, yep. Who else is out that I'm forgetting? I mean, those the, were at least two of the, their starters. The defensive back. And then was it Cam, did Cam Hayward go down a couple weeks ago? He's not on it. the he's not on the injury list. Okay. Yeah. I know they got Vince McDonald, Vance McDonald back. Let well, me, I gotta look that I wanna right. look at that real quick. Well you 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 look at that, but let me bounce the question off of you as to regardless of the players that they might be missing today, Baker Mayfield in Pittsburgh for this game. 
I have not been a fan of him all year. He's had a couple of good games. Obviously, one of them was when I bet against him. But, you know, Baker Mayfield does not give me any sense of confidence for this game here. No. I mean, I'm going Steelers, and I'm taking the six. I said Vance McDonald. I meant Vince Williams. I'm so stupid. Um, yes, I'm I'm taking the Steelers in the six for sure. Joe Hayden's out too tomorrow. Okay, so Hayden's out. But I mean, uh, even though you have these Steeler people that have left, I yeah, I don't I don't care. I, I don't I don't care. They're they're they should win. They this this shouldn't even be a a thing. They're gonna they're gonna win. They're gonna win. They're gonna cover. They're gonna win. This is definitely a part of my bet. Um. All right, so you're going to be taking the I Steelers. Like I'm going to be taking the Steelers. You're talking about it's going to be part of your bet. So let's jump right into it now with what we got going today and tomorrow. Fourth down. Fourth down. All right, so what'd you end up doing here? I'll let you pick first, unless okay. you want me to go. And we'll do we'll do our parlays and teasers, and then I pick two over unders. If you pick two over unders, then we'll talk about those as well. I yeah, I didn't do any of the over unders, but I I can tell you right off the top that the Rams Seahawks is going to be an under. That that's that should just be a, I can't even believe it, that should be thirty two. But um, all right, so for for a parlay, here's what I'm going to do: for uh, a four team tease and a four team parlay with the same four guys. I'm going to do. Bills, Hawks, Ravens, Steelers. You're doing Bills, Hawks, Bills, Hawks, Ravens, Ravens, Steelers, Steelers. Okay. And that's well, your and that's your parlay and your tees. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The parlay and my tees. I'm crossing the bo- I'm crossing the line, which I I hate to do. I hate doing it, but I'm gonna do it. Um. So I'm going to do a $25 parlay, okay. and then I'm going to do a $50 tease. Okay. All right. And that's it. That those are your two bets. Well, I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to lay some money straight. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead. We got some straight so, bets. I'm going to do a hundred on the Ravens. Yep. And I'm going to do a hundred on the Steelers. Okay. The Steelers game could be my saving grace because I feel as if I should even lay more on that. That is one of that's nothing probably, stopping you. That's my favorite game of the week. I just don't feel comfortable like going from the top to the bottom. I can see a way the Colts can beat the Bills. I can see a way the Rams can beat the Seahawks. I can see a way that the Washington football team covers the nine points. I can see Derrick Henry controlling that game, Lamar Jackson having a bad game, Titans covering. I can see the Saints maybe winning, not winning, but just not crushing the Bears or the Bears getting a back-end cover, you know, of a last-second touchdown when it doesn't matter. Sure. But I, I cannot see how the Browns are going to go into Pittsburgh in the cold, freezing cold, where the, there is fans there, right? In Pittsburgh, they there have been fans all year. I'm sure there will be uh, right. this week, unless they switched it, but I'm not, again, right, like go Sunday check. Cool. Night, I don't think it, it, it'll matter, though. But Sunday night primetime, Ben Roethlisberger, playoffs, Mike Tomlin, like, you, you, that's just tough to imagine. Right, like that—that's really tough to imagine. Yeah, I can't that, see it. That's the game of the week. Yeah, uh, Steelers will be welcoming fans back to Heinz Field during their 2020 postseason. Uh, so there will be people in the stands for the game. Yeah, those are so. Those are my bets. Steelers are my pick of the week. Uh, all right, so those are Chris's. So parlay and teaser is the same. Bills, Seahawks, Ravens, Steelers, and then you're going to lay down a hundred bucks straight up on the Ravens and the Steelers. That leaves me, and I am just going to do two things here. I am going to do a hundred dollar uh, parlay, and I am going to take the Steelers and the six. 
And then I'm also going to take the Seahawks and the three. Uh, again, if Goff plays and he plays well, it, this could be a doomsday for this parlay. But I don't know. I have not seen Goff perform well uh, in the recent past. And then last week, he didn't even play. So he could have a banged up thumb. If they do put him out there and they got a switch, then you're dealing with a quarterback switch in game. I just think everything here leans toward the Seahawks winning by more than three. And so I'm going to throw that in with the Steelers game, which you also liked. And then the tease that I'm going to do is going to be some of these big guys and bringing them down. So I'm going to do another 100. And this basically, I think it's my second bankroll here, um, is I'm going to do 100 bucks on the Bills, the Bucks, the Saints, and the, the Saints, the Saints, and the Steelers. So the Bills will come down to a half a point. The Bucks are going to come down to two points. The Saints are going to come down to four. And the Steelers are going to come back to a pick em. And obviously, if you were to ask me where do I think that the weak link in the fence is there, I would say that Saints game in the four points. Because the Bears play, they're probably going to keep it pretty close. And then that four, maybe it's a three-point a field goal win, and then that would do away with that four. But that's what I'm going to do here. So $100 on the Steelers and Seahawks straight up. $100 tees with the Bills, Bucks, Saints, and Steelers. So that leaves the over-unders, and I'll do my two, and then you can do your two. Um, I am going to go under on my two, and I'm picking one on each day, Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to take the two biggest scores over under totals of the weekend. I'm taking the Bills and the Colts and I'm going under and I'm taking the Ravens and the Titans and going under. Um, I, I have trouble seeing the Colts racking up points here outside on the road and I'm not quite sure the Bills are really going to pop off either. So 51 and a half points, I'm I like that under. And then it's kind of the same with the Ravens. The Ravens and Titans. The Ravens' defense is really good. And sure, the Titans' offense can score. But I think if the Titans are to stay in this game here, it'll probably be on the ground behind Derrick Henry and trying to limit the time on the clock and, you know, keep uh, Mr. Jackson off the field. So I just don't see this really going past the 54-and-a-half. So those are my two. Bills, Colts under, Ravens, Titans under. What do you got? Uh, Rams, Seahawks. I think that's just going to be a slugfest. 42 points is... So they're expecting 43 is what they're saying. You have to get to 43. Uh, 27-20. Like, they have to do like a 27-20 game. Like, that's not going to happen. That's, there's no way. So I'm, I'm going to go under that. And then the other game uh, I was looking at, <coughs> it's, I'll talk about another game that you didn't talk about, was the Bears Saints. And I, I don't know, 47, like we were kind of mentioning before, like that's kind of tough. Just like the Browns Steelers game, like the 47 is going to be kind of tough. I, but I, I, I think the Bears Saints is going to be going to be an under. That's I, I just don't see either one of those teams putting up enough points to to cover that. Okay. All right, so you're also going two unders. You're going to be taking the Seahawks Rams under and you're going to be taking the Saints Bears under. So, if I'm not mistaken, that's all I got unless there's anything else you want to lay on the line, any props or anything else to talk about. We never really do them and I haven't even looked at them, but no, we got some uh, fantasy to deal with in the next 20 minutes. Oh, some fantasy to deal with. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, all the best to everyone out there. Chris, I will talk to you later in the week. And we will reconvene for playoff week two. All the best. Enjoy Audi 5000. Chris, talk to you later. Adios. All right. All right.